Welcome to the third video in our How to FreeBSD series. In this video, I'm going to walk through how to install graphics card drivers. So next week, I'll be releasing a video showing you how to install various desktop environments. Um, I think we'll cover KDE, GNOME, and XFCE. So I'll cover all three of those for you. Um, but before we proceed, obviously, you're going to need your graphics card drivers installed. So whether you're running Intel, NVIDIA, or AMD, I'm going to walk through how to install each of those. Um, now, I will leave a link in the description below to the manual pages for the FreeBSD handbook, which pretty much got all the information in there anyway. But I'm going to walk through and show you how to do it. Um, now, before you go steaming ahead, you need to uh, at least have followed the first two videos. So the first one covered how to install FreeBSD. We also installed a couple of tools such as sudo and do as um, to be able to gain root access. So in addition to that, we did a follow up video on boot environments. Now the boot environments video um, shows you how to make a snapshot of your system before you do upgrades, just in case anything goes wrong. In addition to the boot environments, um, I go through and show you how to upgrade the FreeBSD packages on the FreeBSD system. So it's definitely worth watching that video. Now, if you follow those two or you're competent enough to um, at least get FreeBSD up and running, let's go ahead and get you some graphics, gra graphics card drivers installed. In order to install a graphics card on the FreeBSD, um, I'll leave the link in the description below to this manual page. But this basically gives you the instructions to install uh, Intel, NVIDIA, or AMD graphics cards um, in order to install Xorg. So scroll down, you can see graphics card drivers here, the packages, um, and the modules needed to run them. So um what we need to do is have a look at this command here to identify which graphics card is installed in your system if you're not already sure uh, let me pull this up real quick so if we copy that command then we paste it into here you can see mine's come up straight away and said intel corporation we're going to follow the instructions for Intel on this one. Um, so to do the Intel one, we need to install package, package install DRMK mod. So if we copy that, that's will just do it. So do as package install DRMK mod. So it's support both AMD and Intel this one. So we'll just go ahead and go yes. And it will install all the firmware for all the different types of cards. So if using AMD, you need to Add these to the uh, kernel load list. So i915 for Intel, which is ready on KMS or the AMD. So choose whichever whichever one that you want to do there. So we're going to do copy that command, and then we can just do. Does it give you the instructions here? Yeah, it does. So I can just copy that. Do ours. So copy that, and that basically adds it into the um, etc. rc.com file. If we just pull that up. Um, so it literally just added this line to the end of it, which we could have added manually. Likewise, if you're installing the uh AMD one, then you would have uh, copied this command here. So it's still installing the same DRM package. Um, but then the kernel 
module that you're loading would have been this AMD, G, uh, AMD G, GPU. Um, or for the older Radeons, it would have been this. Um, now, it does say that uh, if you're using high CPU usage, I usually install these anyway. So we'll go ahead and copy that for the Intel one. So that's pretty much the graphics card driver installed. Uh, if I do cat etc rc.com just to save rebooting, I copy that. I'm going to do do ours KLD load. And that's downloaded the graphics card driver. Um, so don't forget, so identify which card you've got. Uh, you can just Where's it going? Run this command here. Um, so one thing that you're going to need to do before you um, can actually install any sort of um, desktop environment is you need to be a member of the video group. Now it's also give you the commands here. So I do that. So let's add to video group. Mine is M. And then the username. Now we already were in this. If you was following this video series when I uh first installed the system, I did add it to that group anyway. So that's pretty much all you need to do for that. Now, if you look at NVIDIA drivers, it's a slightly different process. And if we scroll down here, the instructions are still here. Um, we've got the links to supported hardware, but it's pretty much package install NVIDIA driver. And then you need to just run, the, um, run this to load the kernel modules on boot, which is NVIDIA mode set, um, and NVIDIA. So you can actually just do as such. And then if we look at the config file. You can see it's added them in, so you can do it that way. I'm going to remove them because I'm not using them video graphics card. The next thing we need to do um, before we can proceed to install any kind of desktop environment is go back up here on this first line to install XORG. It's just package install XORG. So do ours. Go ahead and do that. Um, so that's it basically. Now we're also we pretty much all need it. So once we edit, except for a first tab, now be careful with this file. Um, I know I'm going to space this out so I can read it a bit better.
which makes it easier for me to read it. No, I sent me tabs to four on this, so just so I know. So they all want proc pretty much mounted, so we're gonna do proc. The mount point is gonna be or just proc. Then proc fs with a file system type. Then we want rewrite zero zero. And then we can do do as mount proc. Check and you can see that we've got that loaded. So pretty much all the um, desktop environments will require that stage. Um, so just before we start this, I want to. This is optional. You know, for local etc. X eleven. Xorg dot com dot date, and we're going to create a file called flags dot. Comp if it doesn't exist. And in here we want section server flags. And we want option. Uh don't zap. And we set that to off. In the end the section. So all this don't all what we're doing is turning don't zap off. And the zap is basically um, quick way to. No oh god. Let me do that again. Section server flags. Uh, option don't zap it's it off section I think it's control or backspace which will allow you to um basically just exit system. Right. So with that we should be able to um this is a bit more awkward um yeah keyboard just tap skill all right so we now log in I know this is a bit small, sorry about that. You'll be able to do start X. And there we've got basic X config. I can't get out that one, but the uh one this was up. Bear with me one second. Um let me just now this and again there we go so i'll leave the links to what you need to do to enable that it's just i mean obviously it's not it is optional and it's not necessary for you to do that but just control alt and backspace allows you to quit it which is kind of handy to be able to do so now we've got our video up and running um we're pretty much good to start installing desktop environments and just stop this here for a second so hopefully now whether you're running intel AMD or NVIDIA graphics cards, you've now got them successfully installed and you'll be at the stage where you're ready to install a graphical desktop environment, which is what we'll be looking at over the next coming videos. So before you run off, check the link at the end of the video to see if that video has been released yet. We do have a members section on here, so members get videos released to them earlier and then they get released to the public. So we should have one released on Thursday 
um, and then we'll cover like XFCE, GNOME, we'll cover KDE, um, and then we'll take it from there and see what comes after that. So if you did find this video useful, please hit that like button, consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit the notifications icon so you get notified when any videos are released. Um, and if you didn't check the first videos out, one and two, which cover the installation and boot environments, uh, I suggest that you do that. So one of the things that you need to make sure that you've done is add the users to the operator and video group that you want to be able to log in. So that being said, I'll see you in the next video.